Hello everyone, welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming. It's going to be time for a strategy video today. Now what we will be looking at today, this is going to be a Protoss versus Zerg strategy. You can see the opponent over here, this is EG's Idra, and the player that we will be focusing on here is Minigun. Now this is from a game that I did a commentary on a day or two ago, and I thought that this was pretty fantastic play here from Minigun, and I wanted to do a strategy video covering it. So what we will be looking at today is, well, abusing Sentry's force field and how effective a, uh, a 2 base uh, two base push can be with blink stalkers and using sentries to force field and really deny your opponent from being able to do a lot of things not only defend themselves but uh, being able to actually effectively attack you now a build like this is going to work incredibly well on this type of map. A, uh, this is, of course, we're looking here on Shakur's Plateau. Any map that is going to have the uh, the natural expansion with a relatively small ramp that is somewhat easy for you to get force field walls off on. This is going to allow you to protect yourself during your eventual push. So what we will be seeing here is a pretty standard opening forge fast expand for a minigun. Very, very popular on this map. In PvZ, it's just a very strong and effective tactic. It, it works quite well most of the time. So, uh, certainly a very solid build to familiarize yourself with as a Protoss player when you have a Zerg opponent on this specific map. So the opening basic stuff, 9 pylon, 15 nexus, 15 forge, uh, then a 15 cannon right here, and then follow that up with a gateway as well. So as you, as you notice there, all of those things happening at 15 supply, basically you get to 15 supply to drop your nexus and then you cut worker production just allowing yourself to save up resources to drop these initial frontal uh, necessary buildings. Now we did see Minigun attempt to get a secondary scout and he had hidden a probe up here. Unfortunately, Idra had managed to deny that. So that's certainly an unfortunate situation that actually forces Minigun to push out with his initial zealot and stalker just to get some scouting information done to find out what Idra is doing. But again, the opening is pretty standard. After you get all the stuff up, as you can see, Minigun is simply uh, is working on his probe count right now. He's probing up. He's probing up as hard as possible. In fact, he's going to be doing this basically until he gets to about 40 supply. Now, it is important to note that at 20 supply, we did see two assimilators come down. This, of course, allow you that this allows you to get that warp gate research. I'm going to pause momentarily. This allows you to get that warp gate research as soon as the Cybernex core finishes, but also come out with that stalker and then immediately follow it up with the sentry. Now, the initial Initial Zealot and Stalker can be used for scouting initially. You want that sentry on the inside of this wall off. That way you can drop force fields and have the sentry nice and safe against any possible aggression that may come early on. All right, so we're going to be seeing the scouting right now. Now, as you can see, Minigun pushing forward. He scouts the expansion. The major things you want to see, though, is what's going on inside the main. Is layer tech coming? What production buildings are there? Meaning, is there a roach warren there? Is he, has, has he gone up to a layer? Does he have an infestation pit? Something like this. Seeing no layer and seeing no roach warren at 7.30 tipped off uh, Minigun that there's something else going on. So as you can see, he is going to send a stalker all the way to the third and scout it out. And there you go. As expected, there is a third expansion. Now, you will see a lot of Zerg players move into a third when you forge fast expand because as Zerg typically they want one more base than their Protoss or Terran opponent. Now if this is the case, if you're in a situation where you forge fast expand and your Zerg opponent goes for a third after that, it's going to be a great position to go ahead and try to utilize this specific tactic that we are looking. So there was a lot of probing up, and that happened until about 39 supply. And then we saw two additional assimilators come down. At that same time, level 1 upgrade, weapon upgrade, you want to start that right away. And then what's going to happen is you're going to continue to work on your, uh, work on your probe count. And once you get about 50 supply, that's when you see the, the next succession of buildings coming. You're going to want to get a total of six additional gateways. This is going to put you at seven gateways. You're going to want to get a robotics as well. You can see that robotics coming on through. And then a twilight council. And what this is going to allow you to do, and what we see Minigun do here, is he's going to push out sentry heavy and using those sentries to drop the force fields, but then also getting blink stalkers. This is a very potent combination. Now the robotics, you're doing two things with it. First and foremost, you want to get the observer. That scouting information, absolutely crucial. You need to consistently be scouting your opponent, and using observers as a Protoss player is pretty much the go-to thing to scout out. Scouting out the army composition and position of your opponent is the biggest thing. So initially getting that observer, immediately after that observer, what you want to get is a warp prism. And this is really where the trickery comes into play and what we're going to see Minigun do so very effectively here. So as we're going to see, there will be a total, we can see there are five right here, and then number six and seven gateway, so it is a seven gate. Now you obviously need to break this wall off, and what we see Minigun do is he chooses to kill the Cybernetics Core. Whatever you destroy, it's a good idea to rebuild it. So you can see Minigun rebuilding the Cybernetics Core here as he kills this one off at the front. 
and then you will just be massing up stalkers after you get a fair amount of sentries. I want to say anywhere between six to eight will be a good number for you. So get a decent amount of sentries that will allow you to get some nice force fields and then just mass up the stalkers because as soon as that Twilight Council finishes, you of course start that Blink Stalker research. All right, so now he is prepared for the push. He's going to drop down a pylon, finish off that wall with the Zealot, and then move out with his forces, also grabbing that War Prism. Here's where the key comes right now. This push, you should be all set. Even if your opponent has forces in the middle with your force fields, you should really be all set to kind of work your way through it. Um, worst comes to worst, you'd have to push back and then War Prism drop in his main base after that. But we're going to see this push move forward, and here's where Minigun does something very impressive. What we will see him do is lift up these four sentries, okay? He's then going to use the War Prism to drop the sentries in the main by that frontal ramp. You want them by that ramp wherever they're dropped so that you can drop that force field immediately. Most cases cases when a player expands, especially a Zerg player expanding to a third, his forces will be somewhere between his natural and his third expansion, kind of balanced in between. And this is a very popular position because you can quickly move to whatever base is getting harassed. But effectively, what Minigun is doing here, dropping the sentries in the main lets him deny the bulk of the forces and then using that blink research that you got for your stalkers to, to blink right up into the main because you now have vision and then using the War Prism itself with the power available there to warp in some more Stalkers. And now you effectively contain your opponent inside of their base. You can snipe down all of their tech, this is very important, and then keep them from reinforcing by just dropping Force Fields. Now the next thing is the counterattack. Your opponent will counterattack, so immediately use your next wave or two of Warp Ins to get some sentries in, and, as long, and this is why it's kind of map specific. Since it only requires two force fields to effectively block your opponent off, a map like this with a small ramp into the natural, you can do this very effectively. At the same time here, with the stalkers and the sentries, you can see taking out the tech, taking out that layer, and then continuing to move on to those expansions. But look at this, sentries protecting the natural expansion. You have taken out his layer, you took out the roach warren as well. This is a great position, and this is why a build like this can be so very effective on this map. Now, as you can see, Idra just goes ahead and leaves the game. But very impressive play there from Minigun, and hopefully you guys did learn a thing or two from this game. Again, this is going to be most effective on a map where you can protect your with a small amount of force fields when that counterattack does come. Because if you are in your opponent's base and you are force fielding them out and stopping them from protecting their main base, then it is obviously very likely that they will counterattack. So as long as you can protect from that counterattack, this will work very, very well for you. All right, so we're going to go over that build order very quickly. It was a standard forge fast expand. 9 pylon, 15 nexus, 15 forge, 15 gateway, and then that first cannon coming down right after that. And then after that, a 19 cyber next core as soon as that gateway finishes. 20 supply, we saw two assimilators. Those are coming up at that time so that you can get warp gate research as soon as that cyber next core finishes. And then also you can get your stalker and sentry right after that. Now, just, just working on the economy after that point, so you're basically pretty much, besides getting another sentry or two, you're just working on your probe count. Up until about 40 supply, you will see those two additional assimilators. Then working on your weapons level one upgrade, getting some more workers saturated until you get to about 50 supply and at that point you start to work up for the push we're going to see a total of six gateways dropped after that a robotics getting dropped as well as that twilight council robotics will first be getting the observer to scout out your opponent very important immediately after that you of course want to get to that warp prism because that's what's going to allow you to, to drop and deny your opponent from protecting their main base and you saw how effective that push was twilight council finishes you obviously want to get that blink research blink stalkers uh, that micro that is available through them very beneficial in engaging a roach heavy army that your zerg opponent may have all right guys hopefully you did enjoy this strategy video and once more hopefully it has taught you a thing or two as always guys if you like the content please subscribe i thank you for watching keep watching and keep owning